Let's roll on. Next up for us, 1 p.m. Eastern, Los Angeles Chargers 0-2, 0-1 on the road at Minnesota Vikings, 0-2, 0-1 at home at U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, Minnesota. You know, you mentioned before the season started that uh, now that everybody's off the Chargers, it's time to get on the Chargers. I'm sorry. (laughs) (laughs) No, it's okay. It's okay. I, I don't. I don't mind. Obviously, we'd get a better line now, but Sharpie said the exact same thing after two games. The exact same thing. And here's Sharpie, a man with, you know, Charger bolts tattooed on his head, <laughs> and he said the exact same thing after two games. And look, I took that when I was breaking down the game, and I was like, yeah, you know, uh, everybody's going to be off. Uh, the Chargers, maybe this is the time to grab them. Unfortunately, this is, you know, an angry Viking squad that's 0-2 that just is on the extra rest and preparation, which is so helpful this time of year. And I don't know if I can do it. And I and I wish I could. And maybe I will have a better chance after we talk it out. So let's do that right now. We have this sitting with the Chargers at minus one at even money it opened up at minus one at minus 102 so there's been no movement uh, at all why don't we take a look at the money line maybe that'll give us a better idea of what's happening here with this uh, chargers spot they're sitting right now at minus 107 uh, they opened up at minus 109 it did go down to minus 104 uh, there's been or minus 103 even there's been very little movement very very little movement here let's go over to the total this total is up to 54 and a half. This opened up at 51 and a half. Uh, you know, we're climbing and we're climbing high for this total now. Very, very high. Sharpie says this is easy. My team taking 2-0, and o, taking the points, and because they're 0-2, we get value. Better defense, better O, bad coaching each way. Chargers win by 14 or more. 14 or more. Wow. All right. So... Let's take a look at the cash flow here. I mean, that this is a really, really high total of 54 and a half. I mean, but the Chargers seem to play those types of football games. Let's take a look at this. On the spread right now, 43% of the ticket, 65% of the cash is on the Vikings. On the money line right now, 39% of the ticket, 64% of cash is on the Vikings. So we got the exact same thing. On the total, though, uh, 79% of the ticket, 76% of cash is on the over. Slatsy says Chargers have given up more passing yards than any team in the NFL the first two weeks. Entered Justin Jefferson receiving props, and he got the over 51 and a half early. Sharpie says Chargers offense scored 58 points with no turnovers. Vikings can't hang with this offense. Chargers come in 0-2 after their 27-24 overtime loss at Tennessee. Herbert 27-41 for 305 yards, two touchdowns, no picks, and did not have Austin Eckler. And without Eckler, they could do nothing on the ground. Joshua Kelly, 13 carries for 39 yards. Chargers ran 21 times for just 61 yards. Now, Keenan Allen had a massive game. He caught eight passes for 111 yards and two touchdowns. Mike Williams caught eight for 83. I mean, you'd really think if this Chargers team, you know, have healthy wide receivers. Now, I know Eckler is a huge loss, and... It, it certainly looked uh, as if Bosa was hurt with the hamstring injury in week one, but he's bounced back in week two. Uh, the Chargers couldn't get first downs when it mattered most. Two of 14 on third down, two of five in the red zone. So we know that's Eckler's spot. The defense looked much better. Uh, Bosa was questionable the hamstring injury. He had four tackles and two sacks. They had finished with five sacks and six quarterback hits. But Khalil Mack, once again, held without a sack or even a quarterback hit. Uh, so he's got no quarterback hits through two games. Titans went 6-13 of 13 on third down, 3-4 of four in the red zone. This defense does not look strong, and I thought it would be better this year. And Staley's supposed to be a defensive mind, and God, he just makes me want to punch my computer. The Vikings come in off extra rest after losing 34-28 Philadelphia in last week's Thursday nighter. Uh, is Philadelphia just playing bad? Or are the Vikings better than maybe we thought that they were? You know, we were all over the Buccaneers in week one, and the Buccaneers have showed us why we did that. But here, things are a little different. Uh, Cousins had a big bounce back effort, 31 to 44 for 364 yards and four touchdowns. He did lose a fumble. Justin Jefferson got 11 passes for 159 yards, but lost a fumble at the goal line. That was heartbreaking for him. Uh, Jordan Addison caught three passes for 72 yards and touchdown. TJ Hawkinson caught seven passes for 66 yards and two touchdowns. Uh, They were, again, incapable of moving the ball uh, on the ground. Uh, Alexander Madison finished with eight carries for 28 yards, and he lost a fumble. Without the ability to run the ball, you know, 
you're, it hurts you. You can't keep offenses, opposing offenses off the field. You have to be able to run the ball. Uh, the Eagles won the time of possession dramatically, 39-28 to 20-32. Uh, the four fumbles cost them the game, obviously. They still did a lot of good offensively, uh, but the, the Vikings could not stop the run. And if Eckler is not healthy or available, that's not going to hurt them here. They were gashed for 259 yards on 48 carries. Joshua Kelly maybe is a better game. Daniil Hunter was excellent. I mean, he really stepped up. and No one else did uh, on the front. Uh, five tackles, three sacks. Now Cameron Bynum had 15 tackles. Harrison Phillips had 13 tackles and a half sack. Theo Jackson had the interception. Uh, they did lose Ola Maseka Udo. Uh, he left on a cart in the fourth quarter with a knee injury. And uh, this uh, left tackle is done for the year. Quadriceps Terran is done for the year. Uh, that's going to hurt them uh, on the offensive line. Take it away here. I uh, I'm kind of perplexed with this spot. I understand why there's no movement uh, on the line. Take it away, Chargers Vikings. Oh, this is one where I was just going back and forth and doubting myself and seeing what Sharpie had to say about the Chargers. I mean, he does have those bolts on his head, like you said, but I mean, I, I tend to trust the guy. The guy's a fucking sharp. There's a reason why he calls himself Sharpie, and we all call him Sharpie now. Um, I think that this is a perfect spot for the Chargers to put the Vikings defense on blast. Brian Flores loves the blitz, and the Chargers are a perfect perfect candidate to completely expose them. I actually think you asked the question, is the are the Vikings playing well or is the Eagles not playing well? Well, I have a lot of advanced metrics that suggest that Jalen Hurts is hurting his team, uh, but we'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, they fumbled four times, lost them all. I mean, that's that's pretty damn unlucky if you ask me. But that doesn't change the outcome of that game. I mean, I think six points is probably about right. I ended up pushing on the Eagles minus six. I I felt like I got slighted. I felt like I should have cashed that. But, you know, looking back at the game and rewatching it, I guess I understand it. Uh, the Eagles did not play well. And I don't think it was a, it was a result of the Vikings playing well necessarily. Um, but they can't run the ball, like you said, Jimmy. I mean, it's hard to have success in the NFL if you cannot damn run the ball. Uh, 24 attempts. Oh, they lead the. Oh, here's here's what's funny. Here's what blows my mind. Looking at the Vikings, they led the league in play action passes and had were one of the most efficient teams running the play action, but they can't fucking run the ball. So how are they having success? I think that's just you know trying to you know maneuver around a little bit and scheme up some offense to give Kirk Cousins a little bit more time. But this middle of the pack offensive line, but they're allowing the third highest pressure rate. On the defensive side, this is a Vikings team I do not believe in. Uh, and here's some more interesting metri metrics that I think I found something with. is uh, So their run defense is 31st overall. They did play the Eagles, but they also played the Bucs. That means they weren't they weren't winning at the line of scrimmage on the run in the running game against the Bucs. Their pass rush is 30th overall, but their coverage is 4th overall. And there's this inverse correlation here where you don't, you, you don't see this, where a pass rush is 30th and the coverage is 4th. Usually those two go hand in hand. A high rating in one leads to a high rating in the other. So I started looking at it a little bit more. This Vikings team blitzed at on 50% of their snaps. 50%. Uh, I think that's a little much. And I think Brian Flores is putting themselves in a situation to get burnt, especially versus this Chargers team, which I think is well equipped to take advantage. And the Chargers, not to my surprise, they were great offensively. They blew the game. Um, it's just hard to trust this coaching staff to make the right decisions. If I was a defensive coordinator, I would focus the play action. I mean, I would set one defender, one edge defender to focus quarterback on all running plays because they, they're not effective in the running game anyway. But are we going to see any type of adjustment or any type of scheme like that out of the Chargers? Uh, that remains to be seen. I, I can't trust it necessarily on the defensive side from the Chargers at this point, but I don't know if we need to trust their defense as much. Uh, with what I think the Chargers are going to be able to do on the offensive side of things. So I will be on the Chargers money line. I think I have enough now to move. And the last metric I'll give is on um, this line movement. So home dogs that flip to home favorites since 2020 are 5-11 and 11 straight up and 5-11 and 11 ATS. And the average margin of victory for the road team is 6.5 points. So it's a big one. We expect Eckler not to be available in this game. 
no timeline on the injury. Do we would we, would we prefer to wait till he's announced out? When he's announced out, maybe there is a bit of a move on the Vikings. No, no, I think if he's a not, maybe what I think of when you ask me that is maybe I'll take the the money line right now as a dog, just in case he gets announced back in. Um, but if he's out and the line moves away from me more, I might even choose to put the Chargers in a teaser because I don't see the Vikings winning by margin. This could be one of those spots where the whoever has the ball last wins the game, right? Mm-hmm. So I, I think I would like a teaser too if this gets up to two, two and a half. Well, ah, oh God, the Chargers could cost me a lot of money this year. I, oh. uh, I agree. I agree. I think that Eckler is going to be announced out. I think that at that point that there'll be a slight move towards the Vikings. Yeah. Do you think Eckler, do you think the, their lack of ability to run the ball was the Titans or was it Eckler or was it both? Probably it was both. the Titans. It was the Titans. I think that, that, that Joshua Kelly is going to have a much better game here. And maybe the fact that they were completely shut down from the running game. Cause I mean, you know, look what Kelly did in week one, right? Didn't he, I, I don't have it in front of me, but I believe he ran for like 93 yards. Now it's easier when, when, you know, you come in after Eckler or with Eckler in certain sets. But I, I do, uh, I do think that the Titans run defense is spectacular. Best in the league. Or top this league. is the exact opposite. Top, top in the league. Now they're getting the worst in the league. They got blown off the ball every fucking play against the Eagles. Yeah. Yeah, no, I, I, I want the Chargers. I, I want the Chargers. I just don't think I bet it tonight. Uh, I expect, unless Staley's playing mind games, the, but I don't think he is. I, uh, I mean, I wouldn't put it past him, but I, I don't think Eckler. The no timetable means that you know he's not ready. Uh, the first injury reports come out tomorrow. We can make a decision. But yeah, I agree. The, the Chargers are the bet. I just don't think I make it tonight. I don't think I make it tonight. But I'm gonna hold off. I'm gonna hold off with you. I think that's a good decision. I'm gonna I'm gonna hold the reins a little bit and see what happens with that injury report. Purdy says, just remember, Flores knows this Chargers offense. This is also like you saw this healthy Chargers offense. I mean, other than Eckler, I mean that's a huge loss. But I mean, how long? How often do we see either Keenan Allen or Mike Williams hurt or both hurt? And uh, I, I, I got a note on that. Yeah, Flores knows this offense, but there's only so much you could do with this defensive roster. They are not good, and there's a reason why they're blitzing 50 percent of the time. It's to mask some of the issues they're having. Um, issues that I think that I trust that Justin Herbert will expose. Yeah, Cheshire, I don't, I don't want anything to do with the under. Although I think this is getting pretty high, this uh, total. But I, I don't want. I just, I want the Chargers, and I guess we had to talk it out. 